from there, she responds and says, this is normal sex to me. Ha ha ha. Implying like she's, she's down with all of these yeah. um, hair pulled choke bent over randomly, which is good. Obviously positive. He comes back, says, good. Now I know you can handle handcuffs, bed restraints, toys, multiple screaming orgasms and squirting. Guys, I'm here with my man, Alex, from Playing With Fire. Today, we're going to be discussing sexualizing the conversation over text. What's going on, Alex? How you doing? Hey, man. Awesome. Glad to uh, get into this and uh, show the guys how to sexualize properly. Awesome. So first thing I wanted to jump into is a couple do's and don'ts of how to properly sexualize conversation. We'll show you some bad examples, what went wrong, and then we're also going to be jumping into a good example, and you guys could see the night and day difference and obviously the difference in result as well. So, Alex, I was wondering if you could give us a couple quick little concepts of sexualizing the conversation and some typical mistakes that you see in your clients and your guys in the mastermind group. Yeah, so the biggest mistake guys make when sexualizing the conversation is they go from zero to 100 in a few messages. So you have to think of women sexuality like a knob. You can slowly turn it, but if you jam it fast, it's going to fall backfire against you and get electrocuted in the face. The second mistake guys make is they don't know how to sexualize in a way that appeals to women. So most women are not going to be turned on by, and then I take you out back behind the dumpster and dog style fuck you, right? Like, like the crass type of writing that can appeal to men does not really appeal to women. That's why books like, you know, My Secret Garden or whatever they call it, or Fifty Shades are very popular. But if you read those books, they're very like, it's very drawn out. That's why, uh, for example, a lot of women are really turned on by a man's voice. They like the all the cues, right? Not just the visual. So it's important to really be descriptive in your language. I think the third one is just honestly bad grammar. There's nothing that turns a girl off like, you know, <laughs> like you're sexting her and it's just like, poorly punctuated and bad you know just mixing up there and there and all this shit. uh so you also got to make sure your punctuation grammar is on point for sure i mean a lot of these concepts are super similar to in-person pickup which is like my main focus same concept with ex with escalation right it's not like you're not just gonna not talk and just fucking lunge at the girl and make some extreme escalation it's always in baby steps progressively calibrated to the girl and what you just described with like sexualizing over text is a pretty similar concept. So I thought yeah. it would be beneficial if we first jumped into a bad example of a guy trying to escalate things sexually. And, you know, as I kind of read through the text, I'll put the text up on the screen. We could kind of break this down and, you know, message by message, talk about what was done properly, what he could have done better or differently to get a better result. Conversation starts off with just the guy saying, hey, troublemaker, Girl responds pretty positively. She says, LOL, how'd you know with a winky face? He comes back, says, I can see it in your eyes. Girl comes back, says, may like to have some fun here and there. And then the dude comes back and says, I can dig it. Tell me you have my other weaknesses or my other weakness. And then she says, oh no, what might that be? And then I guess here's where it kind of takes a baby step into going towards sexual, a kinky and wild side, he says. Yeah, so, so far, uh, the first three texts the guy did fine on, a kinky and wild side, that doesn't really make too much sense, like kinky and wild side, like, I would have, I would have said, you know, what are your weaknesses, a kinky and a wild side, like, how does that even, like, make right. sense, I might have said something like a potentially nice booty, or like, uh, you know, a uh, sense of advent, like anything, something like that, but again, we're getting into semantics, but they do matter a little bit, but so far, the guy hasn't fucked up. It's, I think the fuck up is going to happen a little later on. Actually, she responds good. She's like, ha add alcohol in my system and it's a motherfucking party. So she actually responds pretty good, I think. Then uh -huh. he comes back and says, my kind of girl, you know what happens to trouble like you? She says, LOL, enlighten me, boy. He says, they get punishment. So here he missed a little opportunity. So she said, boy, right? So it, it's, there's, it's a little bit of double standard. If you call, call a girl a girl, that's fine. But if a girl calls you boy, unless English is her second language, it's like a little bit like, I don't want to say insulting. It's not, she doesn't mean to be insulting, but it's like a little challenge. So at this point I would respond with boy question mark. Right. So you have to be able to take a step back from like, I, I can see in this guy's eyes, he's trying to sexualize. And a lot of these lines I'm recognizing from, you know, my videos, but you still have to be able to take a step back and, you know, like play the situation. Like it's never going to be like this. It might be like, right. That's what I'm saying. The escalation's always calibrated. It's like if you have laser focus on making it sexual or laser focus on kissing the girl, there's always something else that's in play that you need to be adjusting your right. approach to. So 
Um, glad you pointed that out. So he comes back, keeping it sexual, says they get punishment. She comes back and says, LOL, is your dick's name the punishment? <laughs> okay, so I guess she's still she's pretty of- funny. Like she, yeah. she, she's having fun with it. He comes back and then says, nope, it's handcuffing you, bending you over my lap and spanking you hard while I grip and pull on your hair. So here is the fuck up. So he was not able to read the conversation. She's playfully trolling him. Like she's not maliciously trolling him, but she's playfully trolling him. So the right response is to playfully troll her back. So when she says, oh, is your name is punishment? I've been like, how did you know? How did you, how did you know that already? Or something like that. Play along, right? But if you just ignore that, and treat as if it's like a serious text and continue to escalate, that just comes off as like you're very one-dimensional and you can't like read the situation. And then the girl kind of starts to mock you because the last thing you want to do is be that like horny on calibrated guy that's like sex, 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 sex. And then the girl's like, okay, like this dude is like, just like so one track, one-dimensional. So then she replies back saying, ha, 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 make sure you add a gag ball, can't have a bitch speak. And I think again, she's like, he kind of exemplified like he doesn't get it at this point by just right. So she's sexual. again playfully trolling him back. She's not opposed right. to sexting or talking the sexual way, but she is more like she, she more wants to have fun and just like sh- like kind of like crack jokes rather than get into like dirty talk, which is to be expected because they've been talking for what like five ten minutes. He comes back and says, "Bitches can't speak during punishment." And I wouldn't stop there, which is just like over the top. And uh, so he's just like so stuck on sexualizing the conversation. He's not able to see the cues that are just like developing in front of him, basically. As a result of this, just no response. He then double text uh, three days later, says, unless you're shy, of course. Again, no response. And then two weeks later, says, hola, chica. And that's kind of where the thread fizzles out. So. Yeah, basically what happened here is the girl just lost interest in the guy. She's like, oh, like this guy is like super boring. Like it's not a guy I can have fun with. Yeah, sure. It's a guy who's horny and who wants to have sex like every guy, but it's not a guy that I can laugh with. It's not a guy I can have a good time with, right? Because he clearly is not picking up on the cues and he's also not very socially aware. With that being said, let's jump into an example of good sexualization and and we can kind of compare the differences and what that looks like. So the text combo opens up with him saying, I'm curious about something. And then the girl fires back, says, what are you curious about? He says, but first I need to ask if you're open-minded. And then she comes back and says, very. So then he comes back and says, do men realize that you're quite submissive to the right kind of dominant man? So what he's doing here is a general cold read. So this is something that's going to be applicable to pretty much every girl. Like, uh, you know, like if you say something, I can tell you have a kinky side that you only let out with the right guy. That's going to apply to 99% of girls. So he's doing another, he's doing a very general cold read. It's like some old school pickup tricks, but it is effective, especially when it comes to sexualizing. Like you seem like the kind of girl that enjoys orgasms. Like, yeah, like who doesn't? But like the girl doesn't see it that way. She's like, wow, how did he know? So and what he's doing, he's initially baiting her into it. And then he's like letting out. So, so far he's doing a good job, but that's what the first guy did too. The first guy also baited her. So it's going to matter what happened, what he does after this. He also didn't go like crazy over the top with the bait though. It's like, I think the term submissive is a good word to kind of bring it in that direction without like going over the top or anything like that. And also shows the girl, uh, I get it a little bit, you know? So she comes back and says, so you are the right kind of dominant man, question mark. And then he says, yep, ever been with one? What do you think of that response? I think it's a good response. I might've just simply said yes. Like just a simple yes would be even more powerful. Uh, But yeah, so that's the right way to, uh, he's basically, he's saying yes. And then he's reframing it. Have you ever been the one? So she's challenging him and he's challenging her back. Right. Which is good. He's not like over qualifying himself. uh, Yeah. I'm super dominant. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. That would be the wrong way to the way to fail that because it is at the end of the day, the way to fail that would be to start qualifying yourself or go logical. Like, yes, you know, my last girlfriend was my sub and blah, blah, blah. Or to get butthurt and be like, how dare you question my dominance? Uh, Those are the two ways to fail that. The way to pass that is to simply say yes or yes, and then a smooth reframe. Have you ever been with one? Yeah, putting it back on her. So then she comes back and says, I think my type is dominant men for sure. So then he responds, I'm very passionate and aggressive when it counts. I can tell you'd love having your hair pulled, choked, bent over randomly, and being 
So definitely brings it more sexual at this point. Um, I would say a little bit more calibrated and not as, I guess, vulgar as the other guy, if, if that's what you would call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vul vulgarity can definitely work against you. It's good when you're actually having sex with a girl or like right in person. That. Yeah. <laughs> At that point, it's good to be vulgar, but like in this stage, vulgarity is going to work against you. Yeah. That's what guys often ask me too. When, when is a good time for like sexual talk and dirty talk? I'm like, when you're fucking the girl, you know? I mean, it's okay to give her a little glimpse of it, but I mean, I, I usually save a lot of that stuff for when I'm actually having sex. So it's, it's got to be refined. Like you're, you should never write like a, middle school horny teenager you should always write like a confident dominant sexual man right like so it's it's an important it's like a little like think of like christian gray right like not the best analogy ever but how would he write like would he write like can't wait to fuck type pussy right like no, he, <laughs> he would say something like that from there she responds and says this is normal sex to me ha 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 implying like she's she's down with all of these yeah. um hair pulled choke bent over randomly which is good obviously positive he comes back, says, good. Now I know you can handle handcuffs, bed restraints, toys, multiple screaming, oral orgasms, and squirting. So let me, let me just point something out. So what I like what he did here is he's upping the ante because at the end of the day, you have no way of knowing how kinky the girl is. Like for some chicks, for some chicks, handcuffs are like boring almost. It's like no big deal, right? For chicks who are into BDSM. And for some chicks, handcuffs are like too much. So I was like, whoa, man, like, I'm not down for that. So you really have no way of knowing until you talk to the girl. So the best way to do it is to just kind of keep upping the ante until like you get to a point where like, okay, this is probably where she's at. And then you just kind of build on that, right? So he's doing that correctly. You don't want to go start with the handcuffs, right? You want to build up to the handcuffs. Yeah. I mean, the progression here is like bringing up the idea of submissive dominant. She's receptive to it. He keeps it subtle with the response, puts the challenge back on her. Uh, she responds positively again, saying I'm into dominant men. Then he comes one step further upping the ante with the uh, passionate, aggressive, hair pulling, choked, bent over randomly and spanked, which is definitely up in the ante. I wouldn't say it's like almost too over the top. I don't think. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Like, it's especially like almost there, though, I feel yeah, like choking would be the one I would take out of that because choking can go either way. Like a good amount of chicks like to be choked, but for some, it might be too much. So. Yeah, that's the one that probably belongs in the second text a little bit more. Right. But in this situation, she actually responded positively yeah. to it with saying, this is normal. Haha. -ha. So that's a good indicator that he can even go a little bit yeah, further. Yeah, if he would have jumped in with the handcuffs, screaming orgasms and, and the choked and all that one sentence earlier, probably would have been too much, I think. But like by doing yeah. that step in between allows for a no. nice transition pinging, seeing where she's at with the whole thing. This is normal to me. Good indicator. We could go further with it too. So from there, a uh, girl comes back and says, yes, 100%. Do you have a safe word? Which again, super positive. She's all about it. And then she says, okay, the best sex I have had is when a guy made me squirt. So heck yeah. Again, all just indicators that she's on board with this whole thing. And now she's extremely invested. Like this is a date that's not going to be flaky because very few guys are able to, I call it hook her, like to the extent that he has at this point. So she's going to prioritize him over most of the other guys that she's talking to on Tinder, even guys who might be a little bit more attractive than him because he's really hooked her with the whole, you know, because the best sex she's ever had is with a guy that made her squirt. In her mind, she's like, this guy's going to make me squirt too. Now, you never want to say that like, oh, I'm going to make you squirt because as soon as you say that it's like saying i have a big dick if you say that the girl thinks you have a small dick but if you show that you have a big dick you know maybe through like whatever having big dick energy or whatever the fuck exactly, it is or yeah. one of her friends tells her that you have a big dick then suddenly it's a different story for sure for sure so he comes back and says it's peaches referring to the safe word um mm -hmm. gotta honor gotta honor the state somehow and then uh, from there, which I also uh, like because he's, he's throwing humor in it, which is the first guy could not do. He mm -hmm. could not balance sexualizing the humor. So yep. you should be able to, you know, he, have a normal conversation as well while you're sexualizing and throw some humor in there. It shouldn't be all sexual. Good point as well. So, um, so the message is it's peaches. Got to honor the state somehow. And then says, but then still stays on point as well and says, perfect. I'll be sure to make you squirt four to six times on our intense date then. She then says, shit, so real question, how do you become a sexologist? Um, he then comes back and says, I'll tell you over text, 
it's a long story. Shoot me your number. So one thing actually I wanted to point out, because as I was reading the text, I, I felt like it was a little abrupt that he just kind of jumped into the number oh, close. So yeah. do you think um, it would have been more appropriate to just soft close setting up the date? And then once that kind of is agreed upon, then transition to the number or... I guess it doesn't. No, hundred really percent agree with way. you. I would, that's that's what I was saying. I would have said uh, when she said, "Oh, how do you become a sexologist?" I would have said, "Long story. I'll tell you about it over a bottle of wine." That's soft closing for the day. She would have said, "Oh, when is this bottle of wine happening?" I'd be like, "Soon." What's your schedule like? That's figuring out her logistics. She would have said, "Oh, blah 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 blah." Cool. How about Friday night? She would have said, "Yeah, that works." Cool. Shoot me your number, right? At that point, get the number, and this way, all the work is done. All you have to do over text is just confirm. Right. Awesome. So. There you have it. Uh, bad example of how to sexualize versus good example and all the little concepts in between. Any uh, closing statements or final thoughts, Al? No, I mean, I, I think that sexualizing is like kind of more of an intermediate advanced concept. It's 100% not uh, essential for texting. Like you can totally set up a bunch of dates and hook up with girls without ever sexting. So don't think like you have to sex. It is definitely a good skill to learn because it allows you to do some cool shit. Like for example, you can get girls who normally insist on meeting in public, meet you straight at your house because you made them horny over text. Uh, you can get girls who are normally very flaky and flake on all the other guys to meet up with you because you made them so sexually curious. So there are advantages to being able to sexualize, but it's not a necessity. But the biggest thing, again, is to be very slow, gradual, and progressive. Don't go from zero to 100 and always leave the girl wanting more. So don't overdo it. This is a common intermediate mistake, guys. They start getting decent at sexing, they start getting positive reactions, and they just keep going and going and going, and eventually the girl loses interest, right? So you want to get her to a high point and then close. Awesome, guys. So if you want more from Alex, I put his channel in the video description. Definitely check out Playing With Fire. A lot of good uh, text game as well as infield breakdowns, just pretty much everything. You're kind of like expanding this thing into different lanes. <laughs> yeah, pretty soon we're going to have videos on like how to fix your computer audio. But yeah, <laughs> check it out. We have a video called How to Sex where we have more examples, more dots. So if you guys are interested in learning about sexting, check that out. Hey guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Quick announcement, by the way, I just released my brand new mentorship program. So for anybody that's interested in working with me personally to achieve your goals with women and dating, what should they do? Click the link in the description. Click the link below, click the link in the description, fill out the application, and we will be contacting you to discuss further details. I'll see you on the other side. Peace out. Peace out. <laughs>